we don't have to beat a dead horse on the whole chat. No, no, no. I know that there was you're missing the biggest question. How much money did he get from the lawsuit? You want to take a guess? Eight hundred thousand dollars. Eight hundred and twelve Canadian dollars. <laughs> What's the most amount of people who have ever been mad at you in a single day? And is this week on trend to beat that? Um, this week is definitely the most ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, personal life, work life, everyone's mad. Who's uh, mad but... at you personally? That's interesting. No, we're not going to do that on the podcast. Oh. <laughs> of course not. And you know what's so weird is that when you live alone and you don't talk to a lot of people, like, you know, you go to the grocery store and you talk to the cashier at Publix and you're like, wow, that's the real first person I've seen in person for 48 hours. That's kind of crazy. And then it kind of freaks me out because I'm like, the isolation is intense and I don't even realize it. And then when I get upset about stupid things, which is, you know, Usually I'm pretty good, right? I feel like most of the time I'm like a pretty chill person. But Average, yeah. if I have an inkling that someone's even slightly upset with me, can't sleep, cry in the shower. It's the whole thing. My mom always said it about me. She was like, I don't know what it is about you, but you need to learn to let things go. You can't just let it go. And I've just always mm -hmm. been like that. It's a curse. It's probably no fixing it. You know what I heard that was kind of interesting? I was um, taking a class during college. They say college is bullshit, which is probably mostly right. <laughs> um, but I did learn a few interesting things that have stuck with me. One of the things that I learned um, in a childhood developmental psychology class, which is fascinating, is that your personality largely becomes set by the age of four. Yeah. So the first four years of a kid's life, I guess, according to some developmental psychologists, is actually the most important time of their entire life. And after that, your personality, you're just learning how to cope, but you are kind of set. Your, your putty has been molded. And mm -hmm. then after that, you know, you learn new skills, you learn new, maybe some behaviors, but your personality set by age four. Do you think that there's some truth to that? Do you call total malarkey? What's your thought? I mean, that would explain a lot of things. You know, I just can't stop eating worms just straight out of the ground. I just can't. I still <laughs> love it. Um, mm, I don't know. So tasty, so salty. How do you even, I mean, it's kind of terrifying if that's true. You don't even have a complex thought until you're like eight years old. You know, it's like, how is that the truth? That freaks me out. And then I'm also like, damn, was I this anxious at four? <laughs> have we been doing this the whole time <laughs> i don't know that's do scary you, do you consider yourself anxious i think i think you're either like a generally anxious person or you're a situationally anxious person i'd like to think i'm mm -hmm. situational <laughs> okay situation i'm also usually oh. pretty positive but i'm so negative lately like the last week and I'm like, damn, does that have something to do with my like star chart? Is there something in the water? <laughs> I don't know, but I want an explanation for last week. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get into the episode. We're going to talk about a few things for today. Number one, uh, we're going to talk about uh, a few weeks ago podcast. Connor ditched me and made me do the podcast alone, which I actually do not like to do. Um, I like having you as the co-host. I like having you open it up and lead. I think that you're better than me. Um, I also feel that my voice, not great, but you have a great radio voice. So I, I was dreading doing it, but I got through <laughs> it for the fans and for my grandmother, right? For the nerds. Um, but for the nerds. But on the podcast, we, we've been talking a lot about AI on our podcast. And a few episodes ago, we had on Jason Skipper of ReCore. And it's really interesting to talk to people who are on the forefront of building software that utilizes AI. And I'm not talking about connects to the chat GPT API and build some kind of like wrapper around it. That's not what like I'm talking about actually building. Right. And in that episode, Jason and I were talking about how long it will take before the airlines have an AI that communicates with travelers. 
Now, this is happening at the same time that there was a lawsuit that we did not know about in Canada um, that directly involved Air Canada and the airlines. Now, the really interesting thing that I said, and this kind of blew my mind, um, I asked Jason, when are we going to have an AI that communicates like a customer service AI that communicates with travelers and rebooks tickets and talks you through options? He crazy. said one year, one year. Oh, that is seems that true? so fast. Well, it turns out that Air Canada has been using an AI powered chatbot to help answer calls. And this actually started years ago. And why it became newsworthy and noteworthy and especially interesting to us is Air Canada recently got sued and they lost because their AI chatbot gave bad information. Mm -hmm. So the case actually started a few years ago and it made its way through the courts. That's one of the bad things about the world too, is that something bad yes. goes down and then it takes years to get to like the resolution. It's kind of BS if you ask me. I agree. Um, but, but, but it got by, it got, the case got brought by this guy, Jake Moffat. That made that mall fat not a great fat mall cup not, <laughs> not a great name jake he mall fat. no no i don't know how to say his last i'd name. say we'll moffat right spelling jake moffat. moffat but mall fat seems better mall fat's better. Um, so jake's grandmother died in ontario a few years ago and he went to go visit air canada's website to book a flight for the funeral he received assistance from a chatbot, which told him that the airline offered reduced seats for passengers booking last minute travel due to tragedies. Jake bought a nearly $600 ticket for a next day flight. Actually, not that bad. After the chatbot said he would get some of his money back under the airline's bereavement policy, as long as he applied within 90 days. The interesting part is when Jake later attempted to receive the discount, he learned that the chatbot had been wrong. It lied to him as they do. Yeah. Air Canada only awarded bereavement fees if the request had been submitted before a flight. So the airline later argued that the chatbot was a separate legal entity and it was responsible for its own actions. That's insane. Is that not crazy? So, so we were talking about it on the pod and then it was actually playing out in the real world. I thought that was really cool. And I think it's going to have implement, it's going to have, implications for training and implementing and rolling out and rolling out artificial intelligence, especially customer support agents, which is what Skipper said would be the first thing to kind of like take jobs away. Yeah. I think that maybe rulings like this may cause some, may cause some hesitation. What do you think? I think it's irresponsible <laughs> of them. This couldn't have been the first time that they realized that it was giving false information. And of course they do because Everybody knows if you Google it, you can find out that they hallucinate and they lie. So it's crazy. I mean, I understand the efficiency of it all and the triggers of it answering really simple questions, but that's dirty. I mean, to get to, especially, you know, once you hear about his grandma and stuff, you're like, well, shit, that's extra sad. Yeah. It's one thing if, you know, it's the guy having the airport meltdown from last episode. He, we don't care about him, but that's real sad. And it's just, it is it, sad. it's scary to me. Like think about this happening on a like much larger scale, like a bank having an AI chat bot or something where, you know, you could lose your house or something for giving you false information. I don't know. I feel like, are they being monitored by people? Are, are you know, is there anything that flags in the system? If something's a complicated question, like, if they're doing it this way, who else is doing it this way? Even if it does get flagged, it's like there's so many conversations, there's so many calls, even if you do have a human reviewing them, is the human even going to catch this too? That's the real trouble. Um, but yeah, the, the chatbots providing true information, it's going to be a thing that people have to contend with until these things get better and better. I mean, I thought that the funniest part of this, if there is a little comedy and silver lining up to, to it all, I mean, the guy was out a few hundred bucks, so there's like no real, no real harm, right? But the interesting part um, is the Air Canada lawyers were unhinged. So their legal arguments on why that they, now they're doing their job, right? But lawyers who have to, ar I particularly love when lawyers have to argue really tough cases. And this one was tough. So their argument was, we can't be liable for the chatbot that we put on our website. It's its own legal entity and chatbots can say anything. 
<laughs> the judge immediately just kill, just like kills us. And the jury also is also sympathetic because the hero is this guy and this guy is in court and he's like, listen, like I was going for the death of my family member. And then I got screwed over by the chatbot. And then Air Canada didn't do the solid and right and right the wrong. Anyway, I just thought that it was kind of interesting. Um, but we don't have to beat a dead horse on the whole chatbot no, no, thing. No, no, no. You're, was... you're missing the biggest question. How much money did he get from the lawsuit? Do you want to take a guess? $800,000. 812 Canadian dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's all his damages were, right? I mean, that kind of makes sense. In damages and court fees. In America, that would be tons of money because of <laughs> yeah. lawyer fees. And then if that were Donald Trump, that would have been like, $32 million because they've just been finding him a crazy amount. Dude, that's so messed up. He went through all the work to prove them wrong and only got a full refund. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and maybe they, uh, what Air Canada should do, they should have refunded his ticket and throw him maybe 50,000 points, right? Give that him would have a, been a good flight PR credit move. or something. It's insane. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I my turn. You want to hear about something a little uh completely unrelated but super fun okay go for it okay so you know that when you think of like australia's gold coast what do you think of i think of surfing and then for some reason i think of um the little kid on the on the <laughs> the bottle who's is it a dog that's pulling down it's like bathing suit do Are I you, have that right or no? Yeah, you're talking about the girl on the yeah on the sunscreen bottle. Yeah. <laughs> on the sunscreen bottle, yeah, that's what I think of. <laughs> okay, well, similarly with the bottoms, uh, Australia is having a problem right now. They're having a g-string ban. So, <laughs> literally, what you're thinking, <laughs> g-string bikinis. So, like when you think of the Gold Coast, you think of skimpy swimwear. You know, they have the right to wear whatever they want on the beach. And it's just becoming this really hysterical debate that no one saw coming. So thong wearing protesters <laughs> bared their bums. <laughs> this is the headline. Thong wearing protesters bared their bums on Australia's Gold Coast as they showed their opposition to calls for a ban on G-string bikini bottoms. My favorite part about this whole thing is they're calling it free the peach Ah, uh, free the peach. You know, every good movement needs a great tagline. And I feel like I feel like the movement that has the best tagline often wins because people are so simple and life moves so fast. So like really good taglines, free I, I'm on the side of free of free the peach. And I would say, do you think a group of women or men made this rule? Probably both. I feel like Probably what? both. It, it stemmed from, okay, let's talk about what it stemmed from. But what I will say, I've spent my fair share of time on an Australian beach and both men and women are wearing similar bikini bottoms. Okay. No, stop it. Yeah. That's like, I don't know Dudes. if that's where the Speedo originated, but that's, that's where it still lives for sure. <laughs> It just set up shop. It moved in, got a mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like started okay. a family. Um, <laughs> so what's interesting about this and the reason that it's actually like taking off instead of just being irrelevant, they're protesting because it was a dude, an uncomfortable dude who wrote the mayor <laughs> saying he wanted women to cover up. So that's oh, the problem buddy. here. It stemmed from somebody buddy. saying women are out here cheapening themselves. And the women are like, this, I'm not wearing this for you. Once again, if women could just reiterate that to all men on planet Earth, we don't get dressed for you. First of all, we do it for other women, but also for ourselves. <laughs> like, it's just, it's too silly. He said, and I quote, while any man would enjoy the view, I believe women are cheapening themselves and portraying themselves as sex objects, then decrying it when men see them that way. That's also an interesting <laughs> little note there at the end. Ugh. That part is hard to disagree with, but I know it's not the popular thing to say. Are you serious right now? Are we about to have a fight <laughs> oh, on the pod? <laughs> are we about to fight? <laughs> I hate, I hate, actually though, let's, come on, let's uh expound on that for a second i hate when sure. girls dress however they want to dress and people are like they're just doing that to get attention 
well, what if, I mean, what if they like wearing that? I don't know. What if they like wearing like athletic wear that shows your stomach and they're all dressed up? Like who cares? Or the I agree with you clothes there, right? and the stilettos. It's like, we're not wearing heels for high, for dudes, you know? Trust me, they're really uncomfortable. We're wearing them yeah. because we never get to wear them and they make us feel good. That's just, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Hey. Yeah, I actually am with you here. I was playing a little devil's advocate, but um, um, just wear what you want. Who cares? And honestly, it doesn't matter. If you don't like it, don't like, just don't look. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be hated on the internet if I don't pull this back. <laughs> no, I got to pull it back because the internet will come for you. There is a, I mean, the internet came for uh, someone that we had on the pod. I don't know if you saw this, but I don't know what episode that it was, but I thought one of our best episodes is when we had Corp on the pod, Ross, and he started his own podcast with his counterpart, Corporate Natalie. And the Love podcast is pretty, is like pretty good. Yeah. We want Corporate Natalie on the pod. So if you hear this, please come on. Um, I feel like we need two Corps. We have an incomplete uh, pie right now. So we need the other Corp. And, but they almost got ran out of town digitally. Uh, because they had a moment where they posted a clip that was, I thought was really funny and it's a comedic podcast. So they're making a joke, right? They posted a clip of someone who wrote in and was like, uh, I forget what the story was, but the, the gist of it is there's an employee who couldn't make an 8 a.m. meeting because they scheduled a workout class. And then, uh, both of the corpse laid in, um, to it and they were like i don't give a shit about your a your 8 a.m workout class and they were being funny right so they they posted the clip on their own social it blew up they got a lot of hate they take it down now this is a really fast version there's a whole 40 minute podcast so but they take it down and then but before they take it down another creator picks it up and then kind of like twist the words to it and twist they made themselves almost appear as if they were the employee that corporate Natalie, um, that they like worked for corporate Natalie and corporate Natalie only has one employee. And then that blew up and got to like tens of millions and people were coming for them. So they had a whole pod apologizing. And I was thinking, you may think it's the right move to apologize. I don't, I don't, they're comedians, they're comedians, they're funny as hell. And I think that they never should have apologized. Because then you're going to be gun, you're going to be gun shy about like making the next joke, right? Yeah. And uh, so early into your pod too, it's like so early into the you pod. guys yeah. weren't even like, just live on the you know if people are sharing your stuff and talking about how messed up it is when that is the least messed up thing I've ever heard. Like who cares? Honestly, who cares? The fact that people were trolling them in the first place, it's like I don't know, such a moot point. It's ridiculous, but uh, yeah. I don't know. It depends what you say. You know, but for what I don't they think, said, don't apologize. No, no, no. I actually take the other side of the coin here. I think if you fashion yourself as a comedian, which I think that they probably would, they make funny content, right? Yeah. So maybe they're content creators. That's how they would label themselves. But they're comedians, right? They're not making, they're making funny stuff. If you're a comedian, I don't think you should ever, apo- ever apologize for a joke ever. I think that that comedy has to be a safe space and an art form that's to be protected. I don't think a comedian should ever apologize for a joke, period. I just don't even really understand what the, what the big whoop is. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing it, but I listen to it. Yeah, they kind of go into it. I mean, they were talking about like that Natalie became the face of like corporate oppression, how (laughs) employers are are demanding so much of their employees and these companies are getting super wealthy and the the executive teams make 200 times what the line employee makes and this is the face of corporate oppression and but that person if they don't want to comply and work in that company they don't need to i mean you have choices right so it's like um anyway that's aside from the point but i don't want to get canceled but um but yeah it's a I, I, didn't think they should. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like, you could you cancel your workout class? Like, is this meeting every Monday? I don't know. It's a whole thing. But what do you uh, think? I mean, I'm very sensitive to people. Like if we employ you from nine to five and we have something outside of business hours, it better be clearly communi- communicated. I think both sides do have to give and take, right? Because 
And it really depends what your business is. Like for our business running a startup, we, if we had someone who's like, I only work from nine to five. And if there's something that happens at 502, you're not going to be able to reach me. That person's not going to be able to work for us. And that's not going to work right now. What we do is we're very fair upfront. So like when I hired you and I hired Molly and everyone else, I said, we will be very flexible with you. So if you have a dentist appointment, like the other day you took your dogs to the vet and you need to leave at 3.30, leave. Are we going to make you take pay time off? It was 4.30, no. everyone. I left at 4.30. Four, all right, 4.30, but anyway. <laughs> um, but like we have some people, we have some people every day where they go and they pick their kids up from the bus and they're gone from 3 to maybe 3.45. Are we making them take pay time off? No, right? But if we have something at 5.30 or if an issue comes up, that's the agreement, right? But we are very clear about that when we onboard people to say, like, we work and travel. This is not a normal job. People travel around the clock. Our normal work hours are, you know, 8.30 to 5.30, whatever that they are. And sometimes we're going to ask you to put in a little extra. And then sometimes in the summer, there's going to be a day that we work for three hours. Or there's going to be a Friday where we're like, hey, we have nothing going on. It's one o'clock. Let's close up shop. So I feel like as long as it's communicated clearly and you're very clear about what the working environment is, then I think that you have more leeway as long as you have honest professional communication with your employees. Now, if you're, if you're basically, if you promise that that's never going to happen and then it does, and then it does go down, I feel like you have to give a little bit more grace to the employee. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I guess that's kind of old, like old school of me. And I just want to, I want to do a good job at work. I want, and I want people that want to be in it for the mission. And when you are like, oh, I can't do that because I have my personal time. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Well, Connor's worse than me. Like if if Connor sniffs, I don't think our sales team listens to the pod, but if Connor Mm -hmm. sniffs that you're not grateful to work here or that you're not in it for the mission, Oh boy. <laughs> I just, Ooh boy. there's so many jobs that you have just to have a job and this isn't one of them. And you know, yeah. I, it's such a small team too, that if there's one person that's like not believing in the mish, you can smell them quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it is like a really intimate company. And so I, it's different, obviously, if you work for a giant company and they're like, it's five, bye. And they don't like intimately yeah. know anyone who you know, is an exec or anything, but yeah, I think at a startup, it's tough because you are going to have to wear a lot of hats and people are going to ask you, I, you, am I going to get canceled? I think this 8am, sorry, I can't make the meeting for a workout class thing. I don't know why this is such a problem. Am I living in an alternate reality? Is this not like 100% unacceptable? (laughs) I think it's unacceptable. I'm sorry. Is that me? Yeah. Is that what Natalie said? Am I going to get canceled? You're getting canceled now too. Yeah. And we'll have to send this clip to court because ask we're going to be right any by. one of your parents. I don't care how old you are. If you're listening, ask your parents if that would be something that would be okay. Imagine telling oh. your boss that in the eighties, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like how have we come? So I'm only relating it to my dad and how crazy and intense he can be about work, but how, We don't need to keep being dead horse. I just think like people, there's so many people out there that just don't care about their jobs. You know, it's like, I work here. I'm trying to pay my mortgage. Screw this place. Which is totally cool. There's a bunch of jobs that that's perfect. Like if you work for a really big company that makes money, like, and you're just part of the machine, take that job, pay your bills, like do that thing. But not all jobs are light. And we had a really good quote by one of our, one of our old investors, um, she said, you can, you can work for a cruise ship or you can work on a rocket ship, but you can't do both. Nice. And I like, I like that. Like cruise ship invokes, I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to sit on this deck and tan. It's going to be easy. But rocket ship is like turbulence. There's G force. You're going to throw up sometimes, but it's thrilling. Right. Uh, so I don't know. I always like the cruise ship versus rocket ship, but I think that com- that companies need they owe it to their employees to be to be very upfront, and they can't always take from the employee 
they also have to give to. And I think that's, that's probably the fair thing to do. Word. That was a little bit of a, that was a little bit of like a Ted talk. Thank you for coming to my Ted talk. I was like, kind um, of deep there for a second. Do you want to talk about beef? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the beef? Where's the beef? I don't know. Um, Molly found this, um, our wonderful producer and, it would be so you. it's so Molly coded to find like niche food news. <laughs> like, this is yeah. Molly this is centric. Is. Just take it away, Con. Go for it. Okay. So basically there is a 43 year wait list to get their hands on this Kobe beef croquette. So it all started when this woman cre- started making these. People were loving them, and she wasn't selling at a profit. She was selling at a deficit. So the beef in one dumpling cost two seventy, and she was selling each croquette for one eighty. So that's how the whole business started. She was like losing money like crazy. She really just wanted to get the mission out there and the message of you guys should come to Japan. You should try Kobe beef. It's a whole different thing. So then she raised it a little bit and it takes her still 270 to pay for the beef and the dumpling or croquette, but she sells a box of five of them now for 1820. So she, her like profit margin is crazy, but this was founded in 1926. Uh, the butcher shop started selling these croquettes after world war two. And it's just this really cute story of, you know, she's just trying to like spread the word and have people feel proud about this native beef. And now there are 63,000 people waiting to get their hands on these deep fried potato and beef dumplings. So it's a 43 year wait list. You better get on now or just go to Japan and then you don't have to worry about it. First of all, that beef better be good for a 43-year wait list. And the beef better not be 43 years old when I actually put it in my mouth because that'd be disgusting. Uh, let me ask you this. Is there anything that you have ever joined a wait list for that was like super long? Because I definitely have. Start with yours. Let me think. All right. So there is a few things that I've been on a wait list for years for. Uh, number one, and I had a visceral reaction to it just last week, but I've been on a wait list a really long time for a Tesla Cybertruck. And I really want it. And then the other day in my Tesla app, I was offered to purchase it. And, but Tesla did something which I did not like, and I can purchase it, but it's called a foundation edition. And it has some like laser etching. It's basically like a limited like edition. There's nothing cool about it. Like there's, they're charging $20,000 more to get this foundation edition. And there's like some laser etching in the car and they changed some of the coloring in the interior. And the car went from $80,000 to $100,000. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not just paying a twenty a $20,000 tax so I can get the car. I just thought it was dirty. I was like, I don't know what the point of it is. Like you made me wait for almost five years, I think. And then you, and then you, the day comes where I can buy the car and I have to pay a $20,000 VIG on top of it. Like that was not cool. And that really like kind of made me upset with Tesla. Understandably put a sour taste in your mouth, but how many people you think did that? I bet the number is astronomical. The amount of people that said, Oh my God, finally. Yeah, sure. I'll, yeah. What's an extra 20 K? Well, the thing is, I was thinking about it because I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just have it for six months. I'm not going to put a lot of miles on the things so I don't go anywhere. And I have my Model 3. And I was like, what if I just have it for a little bit, take it out to some restaurants, park it out front, do a little bit of flexing. And then what if I just sell it, right? So these things are selling for between 250 and 400 grand. Now, you know, that's what Reddit says in the internet. But Tesla... I supposedly the rumor is Tesla, when you buy it, they make you sign papers that say that you can't sell it or else they're going to, they're, they're going to sue you in court for $50,000. And I was like, that's crazy because one, it's my car, right? Like, how do you get to say what I can do with my car? That's insane. And then two, what if I want to, I mean, it just seems like it's not enforceable, but 
it kind of just made the whole thing dirty. And I know that people just buy these things to resell them and all that. But I don't know. The whole thing has kind of made me sour on Tesla. I thought it was kind of like a shitty move. I don't... All I've seen of these Cybertrucks, to be honest with you, are like, it's not working videos. (laughs) I've seen it roll backwards down a hill. I saw it not pass the carrot test, which like what car would pass the carrot test? You know, the carrot test, the carrot test is when you put a carrot in the like door frame or the trunk and then you close it and it snaps the carrot in half. It was supposed to stop before it cut the carrot in half and like pop Mm. back up because it's an automatic trunk. So it was like, is it going to chop my finger off kind of thing? Um, I don't know, man. The Cybertrucks look cool. It's just, just like anything, you probably shouldn't have like hyped it so hard. You probably should have waited until it was almost ready and then put it out. To, to be like, here you go, consumers. And then everyone's, I just feel like it's been a long time coming and I've seen a lot of videos like <laughs> when he was like, hey, it's fully bulletproof and then smashed the window oh, and sick. it just smashed. And he was like, oh, it's still in production. It's still, we're working on it. Like that's crazy. I also love his energy. He just, he don't care. He doesn't He's care. like, oh, he whatever. Care. Did you see I mean, he tweeted? I don't know if this was recent or not, but I was listening to a podcast and they were like, did you see Elon Musk's tweet that said, if I die under mysterious circumstances in the near future, like goodbye or something like that? (laughs) Oh, yeah. But this, I think this is old because he supposedly kind of messed, he gave aid to the Ukrainians by sending Starlink so they could have the internet. And uh, I guess that Russia took offense to that, like that a private citizen was like meddling in a war. Wow. And Vladimir Putin has killed a lot of his like political opponents. And so um, I know that when Elon travels, he travels with a squad. How and does he travel? Are, How does one uh, of the richest well, men in the world get around? Private plane with a security detail. That's it. I mean, that's the only thing that he can do. I think. I heard that Facebook spends $2 million a year on Mark Zuckerberg's personal security. Holy crap. The company has to pay for that. I kind of think Zuck's like, pardon my French, I think Zuck's a little bitch. I feel like ever since, I feel like ever since that fight thing, just the, all the videos I saw of him with gloves on with his shirt off being like, I don't know. I he lost his, I don't know. Yeah, he's a lot of things. I don't know. I've I've gone <laughs> back and forth on him for quite for quite a while. I don't know. I I have I have loosely held opinions on so many things. It's so easy to like get me to move the needle. Me too. Um, I don't know. Loosely held opinions, but I mean, it's probably insane to be him. So I yeah. have a little bit of em- of empathy there. And people think that like you know, just because you have all this money, but having money is, it's great. And I mean, I'm sure he loves having it, but it's, there's a lot of stuff about his life that you probably wouldn't dig. Like never being alone, that has to suck. Well, and then, you know, based on what I literally just said, which was a little bit of an overture, he's he's probably a great guy. I don't know, but it must be hard to be so famous, but not like movie star pop culture famous to where we know who you are. We know your face. We know what you do, but we know nothing about you. You know, it's not like you're getting magazine spreads about your life. Like I know a decent amount about Margot Robbie's life because I just see it. And then Mark Zuckerberg, he just gets all these assumptions from people like me. Sorry, Mark, you're probably a cool guy. I didn't mean that, but Mark's definitely listening, but, um, (laughs) Yeah, it must be hard to be famous like that where you don't ever really get to like really let people in or they know nothing about your life. They just know you as this, like, I don't know. What's the right word? I know what you're trying to say, but I don't know if there's like a word that encapsulates it. All right, I would say let's wrap up the pod here. We've been talking at you for a little bit of time. We may have some weeks off coming up. Me and Connor have an insane travel schedule. We will be in Singapore, Berlin. She may be in Switzerland. We, she may not be in Switzerland. She will be in um, Switzerland. She may be in Dublin. She'll be there. She may not be in Dublin. Um, 
and uh, we're going to be traveling the world a little bit. So if we don't have an episode every week, just be patient with us. We'll either post an old one, throw some clips, check out some old YouTube ones. The one with Ross is very good. The one with Sarah D, I think is, we have so to get her cute. back on the pod too. She's the it's cutest really thing cute. I've ever seen. And she's been doing good too. I like follow her and she's like doing her thing. as a Shout out creator. to Sarah D on Instagram. Sarah at, D. It's your girl, Sarah D. She's just like the cutest little content creator you ever seen. Yeah, she's good. And uh, yeah, that'll be a good place to wrap it up for, for, for this week. But at least when we get back and we do film some episodes, we're going to have a lot of really good stories. Trust me, I'll go out of my way to like prank Kenny or something in Switzerland to try and get some good content for the pod. I actually, to be honest with you, if I was a betting man, I actually don't think that you make it to Switzerland. All right. Um, <laughs> we're going to go fight off pod. So <laughs> uh, have an awesome week. We'll see you next week. And if you have anything you want us to talk about, email hello at travelnerds.co. Follow us on all the things, Travel Nerds Pod, and have an awesome day. Later, nerds. Bye.